Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. Good evening, everyone. New tonight at 6, a Moorhead woman says she's out hundreds of dollars. She says she bought a car and parts for it from a local dealership, promising to get the job done. She says they haven't followed through. She reached out to our whistleblower hotline in hopes of getting what she paid for, and she's not the only one. Valley News team's Courtney Lockie shares her warning. A new and reliable car for the Kreps growing family is just what they've been searching for. Saw this vehicle and it worked perfect for our family. But what started as an exciting buy for mom Tabitha. We noticed that the mirror was cracked and the check engine light was on and Nashron told us that he would get those fixed. Quickly turned into a headache. Krebs says she paid a MIDI auto in Moorhead for the car and an additional $150 to replace the broken parts. That was three months ago, but she says she never got the goods. They're telling me I do not get my money back for the parts that I paid for. They are not going to give me the parts and they are not going to fix the vehicle. We went to the auto shop, but there was no answer. We tried calling the number on the door, but it went straight to voicemail each time. I've talked to several other people now. Everybody would love closure with this company. Others like Dustin Carlson, who also came to our whistleblower hotline with a similar story involving the same used car dealership. If he's going to say he's going to fix something, get it in writing because he'll use it against you. Krebs says even if she can't get the parts or her money back, she wants to warn others, hoping other families aren't faced with this bump in the road. In Moorhead, Courtney Lockie, Valley News Live. The Krebs say police are involved. They'll also be reaching out to the state's attorney general's office. If you need help uncovering fraud and corruption in your community, just call our whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. Call 701-237-6576 and leave us your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. The Donald Trump shop off of 45th and Fargo started off the new year vandalized. Red spray paint and a note were left behind addressed to the shop owner saying to stop perpetuating a fraud election. Only small bits of paint remain after being cleaned up today. Tonight on Valley News Live at 9 and 10, we hear from one of the workers at the shop and learn more about the crime. A cool, cloudy day today. Will we see more of the same this weekend? Nathan is here to give us a look at our forecast. Nathan. Yes, yeah, Stacey, the good news is the conditions we're seeing tonight will likely exit uh, just in time to enjoy both days of our weekend. But for tonight, fog is our main concern and reduced visibilities across our neck of the woods. This is our home of economy, Devil's Lake uh, Sky, Sky Cam, but you can hardly really tell what's in the shot here. But there's the, the credit union there across the street. Uh, you can hardly even see those uh, headlights of vehicles traveling on the roadway there in front of the home of economy in Devil's Lake. So that's our main concern for tonight is those areas of that dense fog in our area. So here's those visibilities. Zero miles right now in Langton, a quarter mile of visibility in Devil's Lake. That dense fog now is moving into the Jamestown area, Valley City as well. So we're seeing reduced visibilities up and down the I-94 corridor from uh, Stutzman County all the way to Central Cass County, then down toward Gwinter Oaks. Zero mile visibility there as well. And then into Lakes Country also seeing some reduced visibilities. Highway 10 outside of Fargo. We're seeing uh, reduced visibilities there into Detroit Lakes, so this is where we are most concerned. Make sure you use those low beams and not those high beams if you do encounter any of that fog. So the dense fog advisory has been expanded to include more locations into central Minnesota, but notice it excludes the Devil's Lake Basin, I-94, up toward uh, Thief River Falls. But just because there's no dense fog advisory there does not mean there will not still be dense fog. So keep that in mind that although there may not be an advisory for dense fog in your area, you may still encounter that if you are traveling on any of those local roadways. Here's our satellite and radar. We are starting to see some of those lower clouds and that fog being detected by the satellite imagery. And uh, so this is the main concern for us. No precipitation with this at this hour. That is the good news. So just watching for those reduced visibilities for those folks who are traveling out and about. Temperatures in the teens and 20s right now. And Stacy, I expect fairly stable temperatures with that fog acting as kind of like a blanket to keep our temperatures stable. But of course, we'll dive into more detail for the weekend coming up. Good, the good part of the fog there, then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a silver lining. Yeah, there is. Right. Thanks, Nathan. A woman is dead and a man is seriously injured after a car accident east of Dunseeth, North Dakota. The crash happened just before 4.30 this morning. 20-year-old Cassandra Gillis was a passenger in 20-year-old Colby Nadeau's car. Police say Nadeau was driving eastbound on 101st Street Northeast when he lost control of the car. His 2008 Chevy Malibu skid into the wrong lane, entered a ditch, then hit a tree. Gillis was thrown out of the car and died on the scene. Nadeau is alive with serious injuries. The North Dakota Highway Patrol says they're investigating. 
Fargo fire crews went to an oven fire in the 1700 block of 14 and a half street south. Crews on scene say it was an electrical malfunction of the wires in the union unit that were caught on fire. Police officers who were first on scene got the fire out with the homeowner's fire extinguisher. Crews carried the oven outside to make sure it was safe, venting out the rest of the smoke from the kitchen. There was minor damage. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe is prioritizing the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines to those who speak Dakota and Lakota languages. Standing Rock Tribal Chairman Mike Faith says it's about keeping customs alive. The reservation straddles the North Dakota and South Dakota border. More than half the population lives in North Dakota. Tribal Health Director Margaret Gates says the Lakota and Dakota speakers are the most important asset to the tribe and people because of the language. Many were at home when the clock struck midnight, not wanting to put anyone at risk by celebrating on New Year's Eve. But Fargo police say officers were exceptionally busy as others packed the streets and lines poured outside bars last night. I noticed a lot of people wearing masks when they got in. When they were there, they, they, weren't, uh, they weren't wearing their masks for the most part. Fargo police say they weren't informed of any CDC type violations. Mostly officers responded to disturbances, but no critical incidents. Moorhead police say the night was quiet as their businesses are still closed. The Senate held a rare New Year's Day session to override a presidential veto. Soon a new Congress will begin with lawmakers bracing for a series of challenges during next week's electoral vote counting. Those objections are expected to delay but not overturn congressional certification of President-elect Biden's win. Skylar Henry is on Capitol Hill with more. The bill on reconsideration is passed. The U.S. Senate delivered the first successful override of President Trump's veto of the national defense bill. Earlier, Senate Republican leaders killed a final attempt for a vote on the House bill to give $2,000 stimulus checks to many Americans. The House Democrats bill is just simply not the right approach. This is the last chance to deliver $2,000 before a new Congress is sworn in. The new Congress convenes Sunday and it will face its first test just three days later, with dozens of House Republicans and GOP Senator Josh Hawley expected to contest the counting of the electoral votes. This is the only opportunity that I have to be heard and to speak up on behalf of my constituents. The president praised Hawley on Twitter, saying America is proud of Josh and the many others who are joining him. Vice President Mike Pence will preside over the counting of the votes. Late Thursday, he and the Justice Department asked a Texas federal judge to throw out a case that would empower him to overturn the election results. The long shot lawsuit was brought by Texas GOP Congressman Louis Gomer. Meanwhile, the clock is ticking down to Georgia's two crucial Senate runoff elections on January 5th. The outcome there will determine which party controls the U.S. Senate. The race pits Republican incumbents Kelly Leffler and David Perdue against Democratic challengers Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff. Senator Perdue is currently in quarantine after coming in contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19. On Monday, both President Trump and President-elect Joe Biden will hold rallies in Georgia to get out the vote for their party's candidates. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. More than 3 million Georgians voted early for the January 5th runoff elections. Last night at 10, we told you we reached out to Senator Hoven and Kramer for their stance on a $2,000 stimulus payment for individuals. Today, Senator Hoven responded to us with the following statement. We are willing to consider the $2,000 stimulus payment as part of the bill filed by Republicans, which also includes the repeal of Section 230 to address censorship by big tech and would establish a bipartisan committee to examine the integrity of the 2020 election. These are three priorities put forward by President Trump. There are no new numbers to report today from North Dakota or Minnesota concerning COVID-19. The U.S. has surpassed 20 million confirmed cases. Overall, more than 7.9 million people have recovered. More than 397,000 in Minnesota, about 89,000 have recovered in North Dakota. Later on Valley News Live at 6, it took almost half the day, but we have a New Year's baby at Sanford and Fargo. We'll meet him coming up. Temperatures today weren't too bad, warming up to 25 degrees in Fargo. That's six degrees above average for this time of year. And then in Grand Forks, also seeing those above average temperatures almost to 30 degrees, but still 27 is 10 degrees above average. Expecting even warmer weather on the way for the weekend and into next week. We'll have your full forecast next.